Hey everybody, Brandon with ADHD Game Dev. Let's talk today about your game design document. What is it? Do you need it? What's it do for you? And uh, whether you're a game dev and or an ADHDer, uh, how's that gonna look for you? I'll tell you what I'm up to and you can compare notes and tell me if that works for you or not. So in principle, it's supposed to be a document that lays out the overall game plan and sketching out the major milestones that you need to be achieving. People are gonna include level sketches and designs and concept art. It's gonna be something to really help with team collaboration uh, at the end of the day. Uh, as an independent developer, is it important? I'd say yes, it is. The reason is because when I start a document, I'm gonna start it off with a concept and say what I'm aiming for. And I think if you're not aiming for anything, you're definitely not going to get there. It's important to have a direction, uh, even if you're even if you're willing to make changes and be flexible. Because for me, this document is a living document, and I'm always changing it. I'll show you. I'll show you uh, my main document here. Uh, it's just in Google Docs, and I'm just saying here's what the concept is and where I'm going to go with it, and overall ideas that I might have. This is preliminary stuff. I haven't gotten into coding when I start this. Um, and I had, if you notice here, I have FTL as an inspiration. So having a feel and inspiration and the, the, the gameplay and the look and feel, there's a lot that I have accomplished and I'm moving towards in this plan. Um, I have moved this game into more of a action shooter twin stick kind of a, a, a thing, but I did want to have some RPG elements in upgrading your skill sets and things. So I'm still moving in a lot of that and these notes are still there. So I'm letting myself be a little bit flexible, but at least I have a goal about where I'm going. Uh, and when we get down there into the actual to-do list, you can see that these are the core things that have got to be done in order for the game to be completed. And I've checked off a lot of it. Okay, that's really cool when you start checking those items off. Um, I've also tried using Trello. And instead of using check marks here, like doing this uh, Google Doc, Trello is gonna have a card view and you can move cards around into different areas. Uh, so that that's kind of cool. I've never actually completed a game while using Trello, but I do like it. Um, this seems to work for me. Um, if I was making this a little bit more ADHD friendly for myself, I would probably draw some colored boxes and color code things and put them into gotta have, uh, nice to have, or whatever makes sense, you know, GUI stuff, control stuff, things like that, abilities. Uh, and I add more to it as needed. The other thing that's been really, 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 really helpful is other stuff I did. This is just, this is not a plan. This is a list and it's got a check mark on it. Don't you love to check things off a list? So when I sit back and I go, oh, I haven't accomplished things that was on my to-do list up here and I, I don't have as many check marks as I would like. Am I making any headway? What did I do? I worked for a couple of hours. What did I accomplish? Well, I wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote down what I did. OMG, I flix, fixed the flipping corners was my note for one day. What did I do yesterday? Spirit lantern art. That's what I did. Took way too long, but I did indeed do it. So this is like each each working session. Each working session, I'll have a note about what I did. New ability art. I liked it. Changed abilities with the mouse wheel. Uh, changed hearts to be full hearts instead of half hearts. Those are some changes that needed to happen. Now, if you've been watching the, the series going along, you probably are saying, well, it hasn't made a lot of notable progress and direction. But looking back on my checklist, I can prove to myself that I have indeed done a lot. Uh, the other thing that I've done, mine I don't need to design levels because it's a procedural concept. I do have a I do have a notebook. I do have a notebook and I'll sketch things in a notebook or I'll even make notes on my phone uh, uh, on, a, on a drawing program or in a note program. So this is not even my main. <laughs> this is technically speaking the main source of truth for what I'm doing. Um, and I got to come back uh, to it all the time, but I'm taking individual notes in a notepad and on my phone and in a sketchbook. It's too many scattered notes. I really ought to have a central uh, source of truth, but uh, if it's working, it's working. And don't, don't mess with it too much. I, I should be adding sketches. I should be adding drawings here that would probably help a lot to make this a better document. Um, there was a video about Mizaki having a pause and breathe kind of a moment. So I was like, that's a good idea. I should do that. So I'll have a note like that. And it's going to sit there and remind me just as I read through my document. Even as I'm sharing my document with you, I'm reading it again. Uh, but as um, but as you can see, is this a twin stick shooter, a hack and slash? Yes, it's a story driven dungeon runner. And I've got stories down here. You'll note that at the beginning of the document, I was taking an FTL kind of a thing and it was supposed to be a pause play sort of a thing 
and it's the, and I've let it evolve. So your game design document isn't something that you're going to be set in stone and fixed on. It's supposed to be guidance and giving you a place to start and giving you a checklist of what needs doing. Now, if you get on down the road and things have shifted a bit, you still have that that North Star, that source of truth that you do it on purpose that you're not making changes just because you like my previous video you got bored or forgot what you were doing when i was working on dungeon-esque i had to keep getting myself back on track because i kept wanting to make it faster i'm like no this is supposed to be a game where you're carefully picking your way through the dungeon and being cautious so cautious knowing that something could jump you at any minute and you wanted to try to survive each level is the, the theme on dungeon-esque and having that written down that I could go back to it and be reminded about what the main concept was. It was important to me because I was trying to, you know, blow the whole thing up and turn it into something else. So anyway, there, there is that, there, there is that balancing act to say, I have a goal. I am willing to change and shift if, if, if it makes sense to do it and I'm doing it with intent and I'm doing it on a purpose. I'm not doing it on a whim or because I forgot what I was doing. So yes, game design documents are important. This is how I do it. Uh, let me know how you think it could be improved or how you do de game design documents. Share that in the comments below with other people. And uh, most importantly, lick the video and subscribe to it. Uh, something like that. I do appreciate you subscribers out there. If you're watching it and you're not subscribed, I, I don't know. I guess you're okay too. But I mean, give it a like or something. Anyway, I hope that you will be awesome today. Bye now.